Okay, so uh, I'm going to repeat the same problem except that this time I will uh, create that surface by uh, uh, making a three-dimensional box and just extracting the top face, which is uh, I mean, uh, ridiculous, but you might go that route. So let's start with a part file, new part. Uh, on a convenient plane, let's go to part design, part design, on a convenient plane, say on that plane, I will sketch the box, there we are, uh, let's make this thing 10 inches, uh, sorry, 5 inches. And uh, the actual height of this is irrelevant because all we want is to extract the top face. So exit, and then we pad it in both directions, five inches long. There we are. Okay. Let us uh, apply material to this. Metal, steel, on the part. All right, good. So now we go and extract the top face. So uh, obviously we have to go to wireframe and surface design and look for the icon for extract. There's the extract. There's a single face that you want to extract and that is the top face. It turns green, and there we are. You can see that the ivory color shows up, ivory color surface shows up. We don't need the, the box, but if you delete it, of course, the surface is going to go with it. So don't try to delete it. I just hit it, that's all. All right, so let's go to uh, uh, generative structure analysis. Now, notice that as soon as you go there, Katia identified that there's a box in ID, and it meshes it. It's right here. You can see that that mesh is a is a tetrahedral mesh, which is from the box. I don't need it, so uh, I just delete, delete this, and delete the 3D property of it, and now you have to do exactly the same thing that was done in the previous problem, namely mesh it with this octahedral uh, triangle measure and proceed. The rest of the problem is identical, but what I want to show you is what if I decide to use a, a fancy mesh? Okay, so I don't want this uh, uh, triangular, simple triangular, triangular element. I want a more sophisticated mesh because some and, and there are other things that you can do in the advanced meshing tool that I want to take you there that cannot be done right here. So let's switch workbenches. Might as well uh, salvage this uh, this thing. So uh, advanced meshing tool. And for example, one of the advanced meshes that we have is a surface mesh like that. You click on it, you select it, and it asks you, uh, there's two types, there is a linear parabolic, and let us let me make this thing 15 millimeter. Uh, well, how about your point, uh, I don't know, point uh, one inch, and say, okay. All right, now, there is an icon here, which I, I keep referring to it as, uh, uh, where is that, where is that icon? Uh, just a second. Uh, oh, actually, this is the one I'm look, looking at. This one. Uh, I, I'll call it zap, it says mesh the part. I'll zap it, okay? There. Whoa, look at that. Too small, okay. So we say, okay, let me actually change the size there because that seems to be too small. Uh, well, maybe, uh, maybe what we have to do, let's, uh, let's exit because I don't, I don't like this. Uh, it's too small, but uh, anyway, you can look at it. Uh, let's, uh, uh, let, let's remove this mesh. We see how do you do this? Uh, mm, Just a second. Let me see if it can be changed from here. No, all right. So let's go ahead and go to uh, uh, generative structure analysis and remove this mesh. I don't, I don't want this. Okay. So back there. So back to uh, uh, advanced meshing tools. Uh, 
You do exactly the same thing. In other words, you uh, do a surface measure there, except that this was, uh, I put down point 0.1. That, so I put down maybe point, uh, 0.1 inch. I think I put a very small number there. Uh, actually, that's what I put. So how about putting a 1 inch? 1 inch. Okay. And then uh, zap it. That simply means mesh it. And okay. Notice that this kind of an element we could not get in generative structure analysis. So now for the rest of the problem, we do exactly the same as before. So we go to uh, uh, generative structure analysis. If you want to see the mesh, right click mesh visualization right here. You can deactivate the mesh and the rest of the problem. Well, what was the rest of the problem? Uh, the restraint. So the restraint here, this edge lies in the exit plane of symmetry, no displacement y, rotations are the opposite. And uh, let's see now the other two edges, this edge and that edge, where the supports were, and it's just simply uh, no uh, translation of displacement. And finally, you put a pressure there. The exact same step that we had before, and this is the correct value, uh, 10 psi. Okay, so let's run it. Oh, I forgot to specify the, the thickness. Okay, thickness of the plate. So there's the thickness of the plate. I will use uh, 0.1 inch, and because remember, 0.01 was very small. I'll use 0.1 inch. Okay, good, and then run it. Where's the compute? Okay, let's look at the stress distribution. Change the rendering. Material shading. And uh, there is a problem with my computer. I already told you. It gives me... Uh, it gives me bad stress distribution. This is not right, I can guarantee you. But unfortunately, something is wrong with my uh, uh, video, video, video card. So uh, that's, that's the way it displays it. So displacements are okay, but stress is, let me see if displacements are okay. No, something is wrong, I don't know. But when, when you do this thing on your computer, you won't run into that situation, okay? So I'm gonna stop it. I took you to Advanced Machine Tool, uh, Workbench, uh, there are certain things that you can do there that cannot be done in, uh, in the generative structure analysis. So